Microphones and Monsters is a Creative Typo production. We'd like to give a special thank you to our executive producer level supporters from Patreon, Mead and Patrick T. Arsenault. Imagine a place where ancient secrets and unnatural horrors lie dormant. A place where the veil between worlds is thin and the creatures of the night roam free. On microphones and monsters, a ragtag crew of travelers sets sail for one such destination. But beware, dear listener, for the horrors of Fazin are not for the faint of heart. No shit, they got torn up in here. Why didn't the police investigate? Why did the magistrate not let them? There was a murder in this room. It definitely seems to have all of the hallmarks of what we've witnessed in the cell. Yes. So Isidaf will go over to the fireplace and start kind of poking around with her stick, moving some of the logs out of the way. And then she'll turn to Zarathin. Zarathin, can you come help me? This looks a little heavy. There's there's like a metal grate here. I will I will grab the rope and I will descend down the great hole. The air in the lava tubes of Farzine hangs thick with the damp essence of decay, a fetid aroma that clings to the stillness like a spectral shroud. The briny undertone reminiscent of the nearby sea permeates the atmosphere, creating an otherworldly chill that seeps into the bones of those who dare to traverse these ovoid tunnels. Oh boy. All right, so you're, you're going down and you enter a small cavern. The cracks and crevices of the small cavern form a natural alcove that is partially hidden from view. With each step closer, you can see a little more of what is obscured by rocky surroundings. And by the time you enter the grotto, you see the legs of two humanoids partially concealed by a chaotic knot of debris and the remains of long dead animals. By legs, do you mean like on the ground or standing? They're like sticking up in the air. They're they're on the ground. Okay. What is that, Lucius? Zarathin will walk over to the, the 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 remains to check for what the remains may have belonged to, what the animals were. All right, so you are walking around and you you see the the whole body laying there on the other side of of this debris of of dead animals and 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 remains and everything. It's mostly large animals. And, and remain salvaged from the graveyard. Definitely some, some decayed body parts and stuff. But you see the full bodies of the scaries, which which you would have seen like a picture in their house to know that this is them. And they are not mutilated. But, I mean, other than like the attacks, but... They're lightly mutilated. Is anybody else following him to look at them? Everybody stand Lucius, back. Lucius will, will, will kind of approach... Okay, yeah, I would like to do a, a medicine check or something to see were these were the scaries killed by like weapons? Were they like bitten by like animals or what well, well, cause of death? First of all, before you do mm-hmm. that, give me a wisdom saving throw. Oh. Roll for dread. Who? <laughs> Anybody who Ooh. was walking over and seeing these bodies and recognizing them I, as I, the scaries. I was, I was probably standing next to Lucius, and I was, like, asking him what it was. Uh, it's okay. not like, great. It? It's a five. Yeah. Well, uh, Lucius would have, have been approaching, probably, if nothing else, at the at the, the question of what that is. Yeah. Because probably wouldn't have been able to see it too too clearly from back. Is mm. Isadeth was traumatized by the last pile of bodies she said saw? It was... <laughs> if Isadeth looked like she was scared, then Rufus probably actually would have hung back with her. I like and you said it's a yeah, dread save? Yeah, it, it's a dread save. Steven's like, I, I, would don't, just, I don't want the nah, drink. I'm good. <laughs> nah, I, I, think you, I think you went over there, Steven. You, you asked <laughs> in okay. character. Yeah, Isadeth was 
for sure hanging back. She doesn't want anything to do well, with any more dead bodies. Okay, how, how far into this recording are we? Because I don't want a natural one on a dread roll. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're pretty early in this recording. That's fine. <laughs> I don't even know. All right, so, <laughs> um, oh, so, gosh. So, yeah, for Lucius, it's going to end up being eight. Mm. All right, all of you fail, except for... Uh, Except for Izzy. I don't fail. I'm going to use my dread. If you don't roll, you can't fail. (laughs) You gain gain one level of dread. Oh, you're not letting me use my cardic inspiration? I hadn't really actually decided yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. (laughs) You already know the result. Well, I I mean, you already knew the result before. Oh, yeah. I knew the result before. (laughs) (laughs) He could intuit intuit that result. (laughs) What's What's the source of the dread? The source of the dread is just the the grisly sight of, of the series remains. Like that's that's your source of the dread. Like knowing that so these those pile. are some mm-hmm. scary remains. Yeah. <laughs> is it just one level of dread? It's one level of dread. Okay, so we just don't want to investigate that pile of bodies. As... Well, well, I mean, you can. You just have to roll to move toward it to investigate oh, okay. it. Okay. As th- okay. as this feeling of dread is is coming over Zarathin, Zarathin will be reminded of the attack that happened on the camp that he was at with the Unwritten Sons, mm-hmm. and the way that his fellow mercenaries were cut down and brutally murdered by what he thought were his compatriots, but ended up being corrupted cultists and. The fact that they were absolutely eviscerated, brutally murdered, and used for a cult ritual. And he will kind of have a very strange, wide eyed look as he sees the bodies of the scaries. And he will just say, Shameful way to go. We should leave here. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get anything out of these people. So, so like, where they're placed, like, would we have to go directly past them to, like, proceed? No. Okay. Just take a wide berth. <laughs> right. <laughs> From wherever we got <laughs> freaked out. Yeah. And in that case, uh, that's probably about where uh, Lucius will leave it, and he'll he'll kind of skirt around the rest of the way to get around it. All it, right. Isadeth will see that everybody's kind of faltering at the bodies and is going to ask. Has to move dread. <laughs> she hasn't learned that one yet. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you guys see? Is... Is that them? Uh, I'm afraid it is. It does not look pretty. You are afraid it is. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> it, it's the scaries. What? It's so scary. What? <laughs> what happened to them? Was this the ghouls? Uh, I think conventional wisdom would suggest that likely is the case. I don't feel well enough to take a closer look and see if there might be any discrepancy. I'm going to roll to see if I can investigate it. Can I do that? I was just about to ask if you feel like we need to look at them further. Yeah, roll of wisdom. Okay. Saving throw. To I'm move closer. Through. That's a... N- what do I have for wisdom? 21. Yeah, you're able to move closer and investigate. Okay, so... so so Rufus is going to do the things cats do when they're freaked out by something, but they want to check it out and just, like, walk really slowly up to it, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know? Like, that, kind of that, low to the ground. Do that little... Yeah, yeah. Back and, and forth. And, and, and see if he can see if he can determine anything else, you know? Like, no one else is, is, is you know... Everyone's scared of this pile, but we need to know if this is the same. So, based on what Rufus knows about the other pile, which didn't give us dread for some reason... Even though it was six it was of our so friends. Much worse. It was so much worse. I guess there's a big long tunnel in front of us where it's black and we don't know what's at the end of it and there could be something popping out. Yeah, Maybe that's why it's. I mean, you're in a cavern spooky. and you, there is a tunnel in, yeah, in, so in another do, direction. Yeah. Do you want me to roll an investigation check or something to see what I can find and see if I notice anything different about this pile than the other pile? Something no. Like uh, or you if I find you, anything among you can, it? You can search it and what you find. I mean, you don't really find anything in the in the the pile like you can look at it Mm -hmm. and just see that it's all just decaying dead stuff there's no clothes or belongings but on the scaries 
that you do find a diamond earring. Oh, Ooh, hold on. Inventory. Let's go. <laughs> Little loot cat. <laughs> you can finally, you can finally get that piercing you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> and there's only one tunnel going forward. There's no other branching yeah, paths, right? There's only, yeah, there's just one direction. Results. I'll figure it out later. Okay. And you've found a a a vial. Looks like a potion. Oh, a potion vial. Okay. Can I can I get it? The potion is, is se- the potion is separated into brown, silver, and gray layers resembling bands of stone. Brown, silver, and gray layers. Yeah. Okay. How big is this potion bottle? Can an eight pound cat drag it out? <laughs> oh, it's it, it's probably like a small potion bottle, right? Where I can just yeah, pick the it up weight is point five. So yeah, I'll just pick it up and carry it out. Yeah. So. Or you got it in your mouth? Yeah. Okay, so when you pick it up, uh-huh. your tail, or no, your your sword, like, does the, the danger thing. Whoa, 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 and, whoa. <laughs> and uh, out of the corner of your eye, you see a ghoul staring at you from behind a pile. Does it does it look like it's moving or it's just watching me? It, it, looks, it looks like it's about to pounce at you. Oh, it's about to pounce. Do we any of us see this? <laughs> no. Th- Nobody else Theodore. sees it. Theodore. Theodore, stop messing around with that and come along. Okay. Um, I'm going to to sort of try to get <clears throat> out. So I guess I guess I'm going to use like something like a like a disengage dash action or, or, or disengage action to get back over to where everyone else is, like real quick, just like as quick as I can, holding that thing there so like run away all right and as it's uh, pouncing in your run it, it pounces on the bodies where where you were mm-hmm. looting hey, with with an attack trying to trying to bite you and roll for initiative we're taking a short break to support our sponsors who help make microphones and monsters possible while we're away, head over to patreon.com slash creative typo and join our Patreon. You'll access ad-free episodes, bonus content, and exclusive microphones and monsters behind the scenes sessions. And don't forget to check out another creative typo show after the episode. All right. Roll for initiative. Ten Yeah, ten. Ten? Okay. I, I, I rolled a twenty. Jesus Christ. Two. <laughs> Twenty-two. <laughs> got an, Twenty-two. I got an eleven, and also Isadeth can't be surprised. Oh, okay. No, no, none, none of them can be, none of you can be surprised. If, gotcha. I, I like to think that my claw, at, at that time, like the warning was my claws just became like the tiny little, tiny little swords, and I knew something was about to happen, and so I used them to like just grab the ground and jump. Like, mm. jump well, you had, you had said before, whenever whenever it went off, it did danger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> danger, danger will rub. Like in, in your head, it was danger. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's why I said it like that, just oh, yeah, to keep yeah, it, yeah. just to keep it the same, consistent. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. No okay, and what was everybody's? Sense. Ten, uh, eleven, a uh, twenty-three, or twenty-two. <laughs> twenty-two. It was twenty-two or twenty-three. If it matters, I'll roll again. No. I'll, I'll like flip a coin no, to see what okay. <laughs> Seven. Seven. All right. All right. Uh, Rufus, you're up first. So what, what what were you saying as you were running running away with that vial in your mouth? Oh, I'd be I'd be like, go! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I would like say that like as I'm jumping away, like as it's about to jump on yeah. me, and then they would see it like jump on the pile. Yeah. Yeah. And so then I would probably uh honestly if, if the if the potion fits in my mouth i'll just leave it in my mouth because i don't use my mouth to attack very much and i don't need to open my mouth to talk i can talk with stuff in my mouth and so yeah so so i would have jumped out of the way you know screamed ghoul you know and then like i would like just sort of immediately turn around and and sort of get an idea of where the ghoul is so about how far away am i from it would you say i don't know exactly how far i was able to run I mean, everybody else was like kind of like moving away or like standing back after you were going in on it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like 
You're not that far. Like, it's 10, 15 feet. Okay. Now, question. Am I still dread against that pile? So if I want yeah. to try to attack him. Okay. You are. There we go. All right. So I will roll... I'll roll the wisdom check to see if I can attack him, and then I'll attack him if I can. Yep. Wisdom saving throw. No, I can't attack him. Um, <laughs> that's a natural <laughs> one. Again, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the other one for right now. I can't attack him, so I'll just be like, be careful, everyone. Mr. Mouse, put this in the pack. You know, and I'll just drop the, the I'll drop the potion, and and Mr. Mouse will sort of run out and grab it, and and and, and jump back in the back. He's pretty agile, Mr. Mouse. Yeah. You know, you know, I'm, I'm I'd probably turn. Or, no, I just sort of turn my head towards the back. You know, cats yeah. can like turn their heads yeah. almost all the way around, like an owl. And 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 I'll just hand it to Mr. Mouse, and Mr. Mouse's little mouse hands will just grab the little bottle and pull it in the pack with him. Let's see, do 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 do. Sorry, I just I can't ever remember what my things are. What is the thingy where I can I'll sort of arrange myself underneath Zarathin for the moment. You know, because like we we've gotten used to fighting that way, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and and then it might attack Zarathin anyway. Attack it. And then I'll I haven't used my bonus action yet. I use my bonus action on my surprise thingy, so I'll go ahead and use a bonus action to make sure that if Zarathin is able to it no 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 if something attacks Zarathin where he's at then uh, they'll have the disadvantage so I'll use the, the slinking leap to sort of prepare myself to help distract the ghoul if it if it starts coming towards Zarathin. Okay. How are y'all standing when y'all were talking? Fair question. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I was standing. I moved. I'm under yeah. Zarathin and my well, no, no. Is I'm talking about the other three. I'm, I'm asked, I know where you are. You're under Zarathin. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm probably still behind everybody. Okay. Yeah, I'm just, I would have been still kind of up front, not on top of the corpses anymore, backing away from them. Yeah. I definitely would have been moving away from the corpses, but I also would have been at least hesitating a little bit to try and get Theodore to come along. Yeah. Okay, so... I uh, Lucius and Zarathin, you're about <laughs> about equal, like side by side, kind of. You were talking to Izzy, and then turned back around, told Theodore to come on. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, this ghoul starts standing up and turning toward y'all. This pallid gray skin, or the pallid gray skin of this muscular brute, barely contains its lumpy bulk. Grown strong and powerful after subterranean feasts, the school has become bold and aggressive. It's, it advances menacingly with bared teeth and extended claws ready and eager to kill again. And it starts and looking at, at Lucius as a, as a familiar meal jumps at you. <laughs> Apparently he's luscious, not Lucius. <laughs> <laughs> and he is going... Initially, for a claw attack, that is 22 to hit. Oof. Yeah, always good when you hear the DM go, oof. Hold on. <laughs> Lucius, how far are you from me? I'm not really certain. I mean, unless you're uh, really you're, taking you're, off, you're standing right far. next to each other. Five okay. Feet. So if he hits, I'm going to use fighting style interception. Mm -hmm. So when a creature you see hits a target other than you within five feet of you with an attack, you can use a reaction to reduce the damage of the target. The damage the target takes by one D10 plus your proficiency to a okay, minimum nice. of zero. All right. So I guess roll damage and we'll hey, all six roll damage. against it. Six damage. And it, what, six damage. Okay. Okay. And then one D10 plus three. It is a nine plus three. So I ignore that damage. Okay. And you, you don't take it. You just, you, how, how does that look that you're blocking it? Like, what are so, you doing? So literally it would think of just like a parry. Oh, okay. Okay. Like I would see you're the, parrying. like I would see the attack and I would rush in and, and, and parry the strike. All right. Well, on that failed claw attack, he goes for a bite. He's going for your arm. Ooh, Actually. Lucius or Zarathin? He's going for Zer Zarathin's arm. Since he okay. just, he just, he just, you just put it in front of him. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> It makes sense. That is a 21 to hit. 
That would hit. You have disadvantage on that attack because of my slinking leap. And so he's... <laughs> so, so, oh, so shit, Rufus, we're stacking. Rufus is just like... Oh, I rolled a that one. Like, no! <laughs> yes, yeah, so I, I just I just made a giant meow like underneath. It's like no. <laughs> Teamwork. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so he goes for the bite and, and gets distracted by the cat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Take that. That was some good help. And it is Izzy's and turn. And now he's in our face. Yeah, he is in he's still in Lucius's face, just just blood and, and <laughs> spit dripping out of his, his bloody yeah. mouth. He's in he's in the weird D and D pause stage where he's just standing there waiting for his turn. Waiting. <laughs> Drooling, staring at Lucius. <laughs> Next time on Microphones and Monsters. Tell me, Izzy, this is a scary time. Hit it with your stick. Do you need some? Do you, do you need some orange slices? Really? I, I'll, I'll protect you, Lucius. It looks like he's gonna be okay. Well, thank you, Theodore. From the indie podcast creators that brought you Microphones and Monsters, A Fool's Quest, Ethereal Embrace, and other hit podcasts, comes a new actual play podcast, Dread Tech Incorporated. Set in the futuristic cyberpunk setting of Dark City, our three DDA special agents, Nitz with his drone blip, Sylvia Rivera, the shape-shifting social media icon, and Zaus, the Zoog heavy gunner, Take on the evil corporation Yogg-Sonic Dynamics in an attempt to bring the heinous actions of the corporation into the public spotlight. But will our heroes be prepared for the unworldly supernatural horror that lurks below the corporation's front? Follow Dread Tech Incorporated wherever you get your podcast to find out. <laughs>